crazy caninis. Right, Genghis? What? What? So crazy ass. Come on, crazy boy. Here comes the hair. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the Iron King here high feast kennels you're looking at F1's Luke Makaninis that big old booty belongs to Sahara that thing gone girl she thought I called it look at that obedient than a motherfucker uh, oh so ooh these love bugs are out so, go ahead, girl. Go, you can go. I'm not calling you. Let's go. Look how be it there. Uh, have a different conversation today. We'll talk about the. I mean, because realistically, man, I'm giving you guys some real serious game here. You know, for all you would be dog breeder enthusiast right i'm allowing you guys to kind of oh there's another tennis ball yeah it's the same one king king go get it i'm allowing you guys to really understand or trying to get you to understand what it takes to actually create a breed. Remember, breeds are being created every day, right? Not many people actually taking you through the step process. I'm not going to anymore because I truly believe majority don't actually appreciate it or actually get it, right? But one of the key things I'm gonna talk about, um, I actually might talk more about that in my next Bulldog video. The um, power of line breeding, right? And how to do that correctly. Um, but for now, we'll just, uh -oh, here we go. Leave that dog alone. Here we go. I might have to give him a run. Sahara, come on. I gotta give him a run. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go. I don't want that little dog getting them too amped up. They done bump they bumped at that fence a couple of days ago. They could easily break a fence down. These dogs are well over 140 pounds. Probably 150. Pure raw power. But um yeah, let's talk about some breeding tips, right? Now, if you guys notice, I was showing you guys before three dogs, right? I had Genghis, Genghis Khan, and Sahara I was showing, right? Now I'm only showing you Genghis Khan and Sahara. Why? Because these are the ones that will be being bred to create the Lukman Kaninis. Why? Because they have the look that I want the features and everything. And that happens when you're breeding pure bloods and when you're breeding mixes, right? Or hybrids or band dogs, right? Because until you secure or lock the genetics in, you're gonna have different genetics take place, right? Just like when you're bleeding, breeding a person together, right? You might, here's a perfect example. You breed a black or a person of melanated skin, right? Cause we're not gonna use those color. You know, I'm a little bit more educated and aware of reality, right? We're not gonna use these terms that were given to us to classify, right? But a person of melanated complexion or melanated skin with a darker complexion you breed that to a person that's absent of melanation right you'll get a child with melanate 
right? But if that child grows up to breathe with a human absent of melanin, then the baby more than likely has a higher chance of being absent of melanin as a vice versa, right? So <clears throat> this is why those people who have actually really put the time into creating a dog breed is really impressive because every time you add a breed, you add that percentage in, right? Which is why the F1s, you're going to see a variety of body types, colors, head, nose, bites, everything, right? So when you're breeding, you have to know what you're looking for and then isolate those particular genes, right? I've been blessed enough to have the full litter of foundation females off of my Mongo line, which are the mothers for all the F1 Coninis. I breed those to a different, to various varieties of bulldogs and you'll get the Lukman Canini, right? But within those mothers, there's what? One, two, three, four variety of dogs within my hybrid line. Puma, Onyx, Lola, Chaos. I'll put those in the video, right? But the great thing is when you're breeding that to something, to a quality pure blood quote unquote dog as a Johnson classic, you know, you're gonna get 50% Bulldog. So these dogs have 50% Johnson. And I'm not gonna disclose the other percent just because it's too far, I'm too far in. And those that really wanna know, you can go back and find. It's in my information, right? But the good thing is then now, within that Johnson Bulldog, you got various genes, but as you can see in the Bulldog puppies I had, pure blood Americans, they, some had underbites, some didn't have underbites, you know? Some had this, some had that. So you're always gonna have a variety of genes in the gene pool until you start locking it in, or like some say, line breeding, right? The difference between line breeding and inbreeding, okay? Inbreeding, inbreeding, come on boy. Inbreeding is, well, if y'all gonna walk, I can just let them, I can put the camera on me if y'all wanna walk next to me. I'm gonna walk next to me so you can see me. Inbreeding is when you breed brother the sister. Um, in my opinion, mother the son, I don't do that. Mother the son, brother the sister, don't believe in that. Um, come on. I do believe, I do believe in line breeding where you create half, where you create cousins, half siblings, and different things like that, right? So in this Kainini situation, the F1 foundation stock females are all sisters out the same litter. And there's a male, right? I'm going to breed the male to the other foundation stock bulldog, right? As well as all the Kaninis to foundation stock bulldogs, right? Then all of those puppies can be bred together because each adjacent pairing will be from a different dog with a different set of genetics but same bloodline that's the best way to do it to keep it as healthy as possible then you pull out the dogs that you want to have the looks that you want right so goes back to why you only see these two now okay and oh, they're in front of me now i'll let you see them only these two are being viewed is because as a breeder and the person that's created the luke Mancanini, these are the two that i want that I have of my possession that I'm going to keep and create more. There are some sold that look how I want them to look also, but they're not in my possession, so I can't film them. Come on, Sahara. Sahara, come on. You know? So you're seeing what I have and what I'm going to be breeding, you know? Mm 
Okay, look at Sahara. And this is the look. This is the look. So my goal now as this as a breeder of the Lukman Kaninis, right, is to pair these foundations with other foundational dogs that look and have ex have the same look, right? We're gonna do variety of colors, exchanges, different things like that. But the goal is to make them all look exactly how they're supposed to look. And the only way to do that is by keeping and picking, keeping your picks and producing, right? I'm gonna put them on a leash real quick, guys, so I can walk them around. Some in the woods right there. Genghis, come on. So, you pick what you want, just like any other beer. They pick, they get their keeps, they get their keeps, and they re-put them back into their, into their, um, their pedigree. They put it back into their line, and they continue doing that right over and over again. Um, what you see with you get the doggy D Bordeaux's. The French Mastiffs, the Bulldogs, Dobermans. What you see, and sometimes you guys may be buying dogs, right? And it might say double or triple line bread, right? Now, that's okay to do. Technically, right? So technically, you find a nice female. You breed your, your perfect male to the female. They have puppies. You find a female that is now out of that litter and you breed the father back to the daughter okay why do you do that because let's say your father or your your dame or your sire sorry let's say your sire is the look you want the perfect look right so when you breed that sire to the dame it's fit that the puppies are 50 percent the sire 50 percent the dame okay so when you breathe the sire back into his daughter, now it bumps it up to almost 75, 85% sire, 25% the dame, right? Some people go even as far as taking a female out of that and breeding the granddaughter to the father, right? Now that becomes two generation line bread, right? The problem with that is that genetically sometimes the gene pool is too tight but nine times out of ten a lot of your purebred breeds have been done that way that's why you have doggy -dee bordeaux that are, are red right which has you have the you have look dogs looking exactly the same you do that until you lock in how you want to look and then hopefully if they're smart they have several females they do that with right and with different bloodlines. So the best way to do it is to have a male, have about three or four females. You breed the male, if he's the quality what you're looking for, you breed the male into the female, okay? Then you breed the male or the sire back into all the female pups. And then now you got something, something. You got something tight, you know what I mean? So that's a little look that you do. We got a little, some little young, young laddies coming up while I'm walking to Kaninis. We'll see how they react. <laughs> some big dogs, huh? How much you weigh? Oh man, you only beating them by 20 pounds. 30 pounds. Think you outrun them? You think you outrun them? No. <laughs> <laughs> say, oh no no chill oh chill <laughs> well you said 180 they're not they're not well they might be they might be one i think they're about 150 i don't know if they're 160 yet but we'll see but now that's fine but yeah man that's the keys man that's the keys and that's the secrets your boys give away free game i'm gonna start charging y'all i'm gonna have an ebook in a little bit but that's how you do it with the line breeding but one of my ways that I'm doing it to kind of keep from doing it that way, to keep the genetics further apart and similar is we're doing, we're doing half siblings and, and first cousins, right? And what I mean by half siblings is I mean, you can breed a male to two or three females that are sisters, right? So 
So yes, the father can be the father of all the sisters, but they're different. And then those puppies can breed amongst each other because they have different mothers, but the same father, right? But I got blessed to even be able to have this connect I have with the Johnsons where I have five or six different males that look the same out of a couple different bloodlines that I can breed to my females. So now you're getting the same F1 females with a variety of different males to produce the same thing. It should be healthier. And then the thing is picking out the best. So you're gonna have a wider range of genetic gene pools with the same genetic code, you know? And what's gonna happen really, what's really gonna change the game is like I said, I did the bull, the classic into my phenomenal Mongo blood. Now I'm doing the phenomenal Mongo blood into the classic on the next go around, God willing. So that's gonna be even colder because now you have the same genetic percentages in reverse okay doing a lot of talking you may not understand it it's all good just gave you a little insight on some game on the game but luke makani is here to stay f1s god willing the next two next two years we'll have f2s on the ground we should have more f1s this year out of puma out of lola and one more litter out of onyx and a litter out of chaos so we'll see what happens guys iron king luke Mancanini. we look at hot feast kennels signing off i got these big dogs walking walking talking running and having fun you dig in the sun Pay the <laughs>